Hey, what's going on everyone? Mike here in the BFH garage. Still working on project back in black and I'm taking a pause to show you another modification that I'm going to do. It's a hot one today. I tell you what, it's supposed to be 104 degrees today and in the shop it's already hot, but it's still cooler in here as of right now than it is outside, so I'm trying to take advantage of it. So this modification involves cutting off the rear of the frame and raising that an inch and a quarter. And what that's going to allow me to do is to remove this body lift puck right here. Once that's done with the frame being raised an inch and a quarter, that effectively gives me a little uh, bit more clearance, an inch and a quarter to be exact clearance on the bottom side of the frame. And when you're coming down on rocks, you guys hear me say it all the time, every little bit of clearance you can get anywhere is huge. It's the exact same reason I put these body mounts up. Uh, I forget how what the difference is another inch or better up on that frame rail because it gets stuff out of the rocks. It's going to allow me to conquer some more obstacles. So before I get started here, um, I just want to let you know that my rear cross member here, because this Jeep's been in a previous accident, has a little bit of a bow bend type thing to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this cross member off. I'm going to toss it and I'm going to cut the cross member off of my old Jeep and I'm going to put it in its place. Now what that is going to require is that my cuts are absolutely identical to one another on each of these Jeeps. The thing that's really critical with this entire process is that you get these lines. You don't want them level to the ground. You want them square to the body mount bolt. And when you look at the cross member, this is a 90 degree angle right here. This puck sits on that. So this is perpendicular to this. So if you take a square off of this, you can get your lines drawn completely square to that body mount bolt. And that's what's important. So we're going to get started on that. And I'm going to walk you through this and kind of show you everything that I'm doing. I'll walk you through, um, you know, taking it off the old Jeep there. We'll get it all put up in place and get this project done. After that, it's time for me to move on relocating the uh, spring purchase here. I'm going to do that in a separate video. But I'm just trying to give you a little heads up on the progress I'm making uh, with this project in order to keep moving forward. Because I tell you what, it's already June, I think, 16th or 17th or something like that. And this is nowhere ready for the trails yet. And I'm getting a little bit anxious. So let's get started on this thing. Okay, before we get started, I was going to show you this rear cross member. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video or not, but it looks like I took a hit to the rear end. And the bottom side of this cross member kind of bent in, which raised up the top side. And what that's going to do is it's going to take these gas tank skid bolts and it's going to rotate them in a little bit. So that's the reason I'm going to go with my old cross member, make sure everything lines up real well and that this bend doesn't interfere with me raising that rear cross member. So um, that's the reason for eliminating that. Next, let's get into how to mark your frame. All right, trying to figure out where to place this cut can be tricky. So having done it in the past we kind of measured some things we figured out running a string across and and doing that to make sure even on both sides and perfectly uh perpendicular um I, I took a lot of time messing around with this and measuring probably 15 20 times to make sure everything would be a repeatable measurement the one thing that was nice is i was able to compare this jeep to my old jeep and the one thing that is absolutely consistent is this hole right here now my guess is this hole here was used in the manufacturing process they would have some sort of jig that would come in and hold it here while the frame got uh, rotated and welded and things like that so this hole is consistent on all of them and it's not just consistent on where it's at but in its relationship to the rear cross member so I take a uh, tape measure. Now, if you look back here real quick first on the rear cross member, you have these dimples here, right? So you want to make sure that you are on the inside of this dimple. In other words, you're measuring from the exact same spot on all four points here. One on the inside rail, or one on the inside rail, one on the outside rail, same thing for the other side. So um, measuring that, I put it there and I come back here and I get exactly seven and a half inches here. I took the same measurement on the inside here. And the inside line of this circle from the inside is exactly seven and a half. Over there, exactly seven and a half. Over on my other Jeep, exactly seven and a half. That gives me an excellent, no pun intended, frame of reference in order to figure out where I'm going to cut. Now, where you make where you make your cut in this area here isn't as critical 
as uh, making sure that that cut is uh, the, the same direction as your body mount bolt here. Now, if you have an LJ, that would be the exception because LJs have an additional cross member back here somewhere. So if you're going to do this on an LJ, make sure you're taking into account that additional cross member that goes through there. So in this case here, it would be, it would seem like it'd be easy here. I'm going to take my tape measure. I'm going to put it here and I'm going to mark one inch. Well, you know, trying to make sure where you mark is consistent on a line could get off a little bit. So what I did is I created a little, I guess, tool here. And what it's going to do is it's allowed me, it's going to allow me to get a good consistent uh, mark on all points that I'm going to be cutting. So, and all I'm looking to do here is make a point on how far from this edge that I want to cut. This has nothing to do with how vertical this line is. So I took a piece of flat stock here, put it in the vise, I bent it over. The one thing you want to make sure you do if you end up doing this is you want to get this inside radius as, as tight as you possibly can because if you have a big radius, that will allow the uh, this thing to kind of move in and out. So you want to get it exactly 90 degrees if you can. And so as you can see, the trick here is I figured out a point. I don't even know what this measurement is. It doesn't matter. But I, I can slide this through the frame rail and I'm going to get it uh, what appears to be um, perpendicular to, to what I'm looking at there. And it doesn't matter if it's off a little bit because I'm only making a dot. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it right up. So I'm pushing uh, pressure up against this. That way this thing doesn't move. I'm going to take, I'm going to make a little mark right there. And that's my frame of reference on where my cut line will go. I'm going to do the same thing from the inside and go make a mark on the inside. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. And then I'm also going to use this tool when I go over to my other Jeep and make the exact same marks. The nice thing about this is, is it's going to allow me to get repeatable results um, to, to make all these cuts as, as square as I can. Okay, so I have my mark right here, but now my question is, how do I make my line straight up parallel to that bolt without going this way or going that way? Well, we know that this, this body mount right here is flat on top of this 90 degree cross member here. Take my square, you can see that's 90 degrees. So if I turn this thing over, I can put it right down here by the, the bolt mount. I gotta make sure that it's flat up against that first. I'm gonna take a little clamp, get it in place, make sure everything's nice and tight and flat. And then I can take a little uh, framing square here set it on top of this and I can find my mark wherever it is there it is and I can I can slide this over until it lines up with my mark and make sure everything stays straight and I'm going to make my mark right here now I know that this mark is exactly the same direction as this um, body mount bolt is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the inside and get the marks done on the other side. And then I'm going to, I'm going to show you a way that you can verify this. And the only reason I'm going to do this is to show you, I know it's square, but I'm going to show you uh, how I know that it's square. Okay. Okay. Here's the moment of truth to prove to you that this is a reliable method. So I have a laser on the floor. I've got everything all squared up. It takes a little bit of time to make sure all your lines get uh, um, matched up, but they are perfectly straight up and down. So what I did is I took the, uh, the Jeep itself. I ensured that it was level. So I used my post jacks, took just a little bit of tweaking to make sure that that uh, was completely level and that would give me a true uh, reading here. So I'm not sure. I'm going to try to stay out of the way of the laser here. This front one's going to be a little bit difficult to see because it's a red line laser, not a green line. But as you can see my mark right there, you can see how that, that laser goes right along that. And that is directly on that line. So let me get in here and show you some, some others. So I'm going to put my thumb there so you can see the line. So the line is right. It may be hard to see, but this thing is right on it. Looking this way, you'll get a better look. Right here is my line, as you can see. And then when you come down to the laser, you get the bottom edge of it lines up perfectly with that mark as well. And then you come to the outside here, 
I, I don't know how I missed the mark there. I drew a line in the wrong spot, so I had to straighten it back out and make sure everything was good. But when you look there, you can see how that line comes up and uh, lines up the laser right there. So that's perfect. Now, bonus on this is, is that it gives me the mark underneath so I can mark the bottom side of the frame rail. And that's on both sides. So that's kind of nice. And that lines directly up with that line as well. So I'm pretty confident that everything is exactly the way I need it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to go back and, you know, double, triple, quadruple check, make sure everything before I start cutting. And the, uh, the next uh, event then will be to take my angle grinder, make cuts along these lines. I got to mark this bottom one first and then make sure everything is square, get it cut, get it removed. And then I got to do the same process over here. So this one here, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to take my little tool that I made. Once I drop my gas tank, I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to remeasure everything, you know, a bunch of times, make sure everything is lined up the way that it should be. Then I'll commit to making that cut. All right, I decided to go ahead and drop the gas tank on this side so I can make sure all my marks will be uh, the same as what's over on the replacement Jeep. Um, I've gotten that far, and now I tell you what, it is extremely hot in this shop, so I'm going to call it a day and get back after this tomorrow. All right, here we are, day two. A lot cooler today. It's still supposed to get in the upper 90s, but right now it is nice out here, so I'm not going to complain about that. Um, Everything's set. Got the gas tank pulled out of the other Jeep, got the exhaust moved out of the way, got the frame rails all marked. Everything's ready to go. If you're doing this with your own Jeep and you're not changing out the rear cross member, everything I talked about that one, you don't have to worry about. So not a big deal. But the thing that really does matter is that these lines are the same as that bolt. So um, going through and remeasuring everything and just looking at everything um, one of the things i did is i looked through this hole and when you look through this hole across to the other frame rail this hole does not go directly straight in this one here is up at a slight angle but it is still the exact same distance to the front edge of the hole even though this one goes slightly up so i'm still using it as a mark because as you saw with the laser everything's still lined up so I couldn't put a rod through here and have it go right outside the other side of the frame because it's just a slight uh, upward angle on it. But that's irrelevant because the thing that matters is that the front side of this hole is still the same distance to that cross member. So I'm still using that as a reference point. I've double, trip, uh, double check, triple check everything. We're good to go. Another thing I wanted to point out to you is that depending on where you cut this, you want to make sure you don't go back too far because you have this hole right here. And this hole right here is where you put your bolt in to get your, uh, your bumper tie-ins done. So you don't wanna go too far back because then you end up getting into that hole here. So when you see where my line is here, it kind of splits the difference and I am perfectly happy with that. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Now um, it is time to start cutting. And this is one where it's do or die. Once you start, you're done. Now, the last uh, frame raise that we did, um, Matt was cutting his frame on that side, and he got his grinder blade off a little bit, and that created, God, if I recall correctly, is a little bit bigger than an eighth-inch gap on that. So when you're using your grinder, you know, a lot of people sit there and hammer us of how come you don't have the guards on your grinder and thing like that. When you have a guard on there, you can only get so far, plus you can't see what's going on. So that's why it's critically important, and I mean critically important, that you wear your hearing protection and your face protection, because if one of those wheels lets off, you don't want that thing going in your face. But you need to be able to see that line to make sure that you are cutting straight into that line. So one of the tricks that I do is when I go to start a line, I have an extra square I use just for this purpose here, um, is that I'll put it up here and I'll get it on the line lined up perfectly and I'll take my grinder and I'll start my line based off of that square and what that does is that gives me a nice good crisp starting line then all I got to do is is let it work its way through now the thing you got to be careful with that is when you're using a square like this 
eventually you're going to take material off the backside. In fact, you see on this one here, you see a little bit of uh, material gone. Let me get a square here and uh, show you what I'm talking about. So um, actually this one here is still perfectly square, so not a big deal. Um, as you use these for this, once you start taking off too much material, you got to toss them and get a new one. So just be aware of that. But anyway, put that on there. Make sure it is perfectly on that line. Start your cut. Same thing down here. Perfectly on your line. Start your cut. And then when you do those cuts, it will cut on a straight line. And this cut over here will come down here, be on a straight line, which will in turn be on a straight line for the cut on the back side. That's how you know you're getting a completely square cut. So it's time to start cutting and uh, we'll get this thing off of here. All right, kind of got ahead of myself a little bit, but not really because I, I'm going to do this a different way. So one of the things you want to do is you want to measure from the bottom of this frame rail up an inch and a quarter and put your mark and make sure it's it's parallel to that. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it this way. So what you can do, you got your little square here, you can put it right an inch and a quarter, come right down to that bottom side, put your mark. Once I pull the bumper off now, I can take the square put it here, and it'll be flat up against this piece, and I can make sure I have a perpendicular line to that plane, and that will get me what I need for my inch and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna remove the rear cross member, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna smooth up this just a little bit because I have a little bit of metal hanging down. I'll make sure I'm getting right off the bottom of the frame rail there. Then I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna make my mark, and what this mark is gonna do at an inch and a quarter, it's gonna come straight over, and then what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to, to cut this off. You could either, um, take a pie cut out of it and then bend this up. That's what we did in the last video. Or you can just cut this clean off and you can put a straight piece of uh, quarter inch stock right along the bottom. So um, I'm going to get this off, take a look at everything and make a decision uh, in a second. But right now that's what I need to do. So let me get this off and then I'll show you. So with that cleaned up now, I have my square set at 1.25 inches. I'm going to make my mark. Go to the other side, do the same thing. Then I'll take my rail or my uh, square, come this way, run it right down. And that gives my mark right there. I'm going to do the same thing for the rail on the other side. What is my mark? There it is. And cut those pie shapes out. So before I cut anything, I put the other cross member up here, got it bolted up. And I want to make sure that everything lines up where it's supposed to line up. I'm double checking my measurements before I cut stuff because it would suck if I realized this thing was going to hang way down here. I didn't expect it to, but I just want to make sure that I'm getting the cut in the right spot. So if you can, I'm not sure if you can see from there or not. So if I make this cut straight across and I fish pie this and I bend it up, you can see how when you put everything together, it's going to kind of come up and then go back down again. You're going to have just a slight little valley or upside down valley right there. So you could either fill that in with weld or just leave it as is. It doesn't really matter. But if you're going to run a, an extra plate, then that plate would come over and kind of pick up the difference there. Um, I think I'm going to pie this out, just bend this up and go the route, uh, same route that I did last time. Um, and then we'll talk about adding in a fish plate because we still have to make a pie piece up here. And then we'll add a fish plate over all of this to make sure everything is held nice and tight. So... 
it is time now to get everything uh, ground down, get it ready for welding. So I'm going to pull the cross member back off, get all the uh, um, down to shiny metal on both sides, all four sides on both pieces here, and get that ready to uh, weld. Once I get that in there, then I can make the pie piece, fit that into here. I could bend this up, do all that, but I want to get this set first. Okay, the relief cuts are made. Um, now we have this kind of fish mouth look in here. The one thing I remember from last time is that before you bend this up, we had to put a little relief cut a little bit deeper into this in order to get it to bend up because it didn't quite want to bend because there's just too much material there. So you may need to take a sawzall and bring it all the way back and then it'll bend up a little bit easier. So now that I have those pie cuts out of there, time to get everything all cleaned up, polished up, ready for weld. All right, so I have the rear cross member prepped, ground down. This is ready to go. One thing I cannot stress enough, and that is to put bevels on all four sides, both frame rails and the cross member. You want those 45 degree bevels going all the way down because if you just try to butt weld this, that weld is going to be shallow. It's not going to get full penetration. If you put two 45 degree bevels, it gives you a nice channel to lay a good weld bead in there. So you want to do that to make this as strong as possible. Now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to back it up with the fish plate when we're done. But in the meantime, you want to make sure you get full penetration welds on all four sides. Now thinking back to the last time I did this, um, I recall that when we bend this uh, part of this mouth up, we'll have probably an eighth of an inch sticking out beyond this. So before I put on the rear cross member, I'm going to go ahead and set this in place. I'm going to get it tacked in place on both sides. And then uh, we'll trim as necessary. Then we'll get the cross member in and get that tacked up. We'll double check everything uh, one last time before burning it in. So as you can see, you do end up with that little bit of stick out there. So I have to take the grinder, cut that off, and then I'll get that cross member mounted. Once your fit up's complete, you're gonna tack weld everything in place. You're gonna verify your fitment is what you want. Once you have confirmed that, and you, I'm telling you, double, triple check, once you confirm everything, go ahead and burn it in. Okay, once you get your welds all done, if you need to go through, clean up some stuff and re-weld, do that. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step first, and I'm going to clean it all up at the end here. So now that we have that uh, basic weld there, now we need to cut a pie shape to, to tie in the top side of this frame to this one. So you get a two and a half inch wide tube. You can cut out your pie piece, put it right in there. Um, again, bevel your edges, tack it in place, and burn it in, and that'll give that the top side strength that we'll need for this. So that's what's up next. With the pipe pieces burned in all the way, you're gonna take your grinder, smooth everything out, make sure that your welds are good. Next, we're gonna install fish plates. Here, this is a three by five uh, piece of quarter inch steel, and I'm gonna take these, and we're gonna put them on the inside of the frame rail. And when you install these, you wanna make sure that you line them up right over that butt joint. So I got it tacked in place there, and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead all the way around this thing. Then I'm going to fill in those holes for the plug welds. Now if you look at this fish plate, you're going to notice that there's no sharp corners. All the corners are rounded, and that is intended to reduce stress risers. So as you weld around there, there's no singular point that's going to cause any fatigue or cracking.
Fish plates are completely welded in, went through, primed, and painted everything. Even if you plan on doing other work on your frame and you think you're gonna paint it later, I cannot stress enough, just prime it right now because this stuff rusts so fast that it'll drive you nuts. So after double checking everything's good, cleaned up, um, you can see the back, the gap has been reduced back to stock. Um, looking at it, I can tell if this quarter panel's kind of bent in a little bit, whatever, we'll get to that. But um, that's it for the frame raise. Was sitting down here, now it's sitting up here. Another project in the books.